Hey there, future homeowner or homeowner who really wants to make a profit in real estate. I'm here with a cautionary tale that'll maybe get you to rethink that impulse buy in another episode of Real Estate Roulette, where the stakes are high and the prices are higher than mortgage interest rates. I feel lucky. This home seller lost millions in cash in a relatively short amount of time. Even in the glamorous world of beachfront homes, where we have a lot of stars, here we have more like a falling star. We'll get into that in a minute, but first, a couple of winners in the lower Hollywood Riviera. Check this out. First up, we've got 456 Camino de Encanto. It's not just a house, it's a two-story masterpiece that just bagged a record-breaking price on the street. Despite rubbing elbows with Palos Verdes Boulevard, it backs up to it. The show out front looking west is the big show though. And get this, it's already got a second story, thusly. I informed you thusly. This house has big ocean views. You heard me just say it's a two story and that may not sound like anything, but on the western slope of the Hollywood Riviera, there's an ordinance called the Hillside Overlay or also the Hillside Ordinance that restricts any new construction or remodeling to go over 14 feet high as well as trees and landscaping that may block views. Now here's one that's already got a second story and it's grandfathered in. If you tear this down, 14 feet max height. If you remodel it, you can keep the second story and the views that go with it. And the views look down Paseo de Sueños as well. So there's big ocean views from the front yard and on the first floor, not to mention the massive views from the second story. It's got four bedrooms, three baths, about 2,500 square feet of swanky space, all on a 7,300 square foot lot. It's sold for 3.87 million, a slight discount from its debut at 3.998 million. Oh, the drama of the hillside ordinance. <laughs> now, 532 Paseo de la Playa, a classic rebuild and remodel. So picture this, the developer took a house that already had a second story, pre-ordinance, gutted it, and then reimagined the floor plan and surfs up. Before it hit the market, it was snatched up for the asking price of 4.7 million, another record breaker on the east side of Paseo de la Playa. But wait, there's more. I'm almost ready to talk about the biggest loser in single family property probably ever here in the South Bay, Los Angeles. But first, let's talk about another on the east side of Paseo de la Playa, but further down closer to the beach and across the street from the biggest loser house. Not that the biggest loser lived there, it's just that they lost several million dollars in a short amount of time. Millions? Millions? But this house across the street from the, quote, loser house, end quote, is maybe 150 steps from the driveway to the sand, maybe, with an 80s kitchen and the charm of yesteryear, but it's got views and location and sold for a record $2,000 per square foot. It's a single level, three bedroom, two bathroom, 1,500 square foot, built in the 50s on a 6,900 square foot lot with some unblockable ocean views. It was listed at 2.699 million, sold for 3.1 million with multiple offers and that's basically lot value right there another record another day another record now brace yourself we're going to talk about the biggest loser house here it comes but they're all records so let's embrace the records the highs and the lows i'm here to break a world record here we go back in 2017 redondo beach's post office hollywood riviera i'm coming back to that unleashed a beast of a listing, two side-by-side, -side, contiguous beachfront properties on the west side of Paseo de la Playa, the creme de la creme of the addresses in the Hollywood Riviera. This palatial estate, complete with 10 bedrooms, 10 and a half baths, and enough square footage to host a neighborhood block party, hit the market with a debut price of $25 million, almost 16,000 square feet livable, which is huge in this part of the South Bay, Los Angeles. Since it's two lots, it's 62,000 square feet of property with with a private path leading down to the beach and your own private gate on the sand. Oh, and down there, there's also a private sand volleyball court. Can you imagine? It's like buying a small country, but with a way better view. So what happened next? Hold on to your imaginary small countries because in February 2018, this coastal compound sold for $22.65 I know, I know, what a bargain, right? That was a record high for residential property in the beach cities, Redonda Beach, Hermosa Beach, and Torrance. I mentioned that the property's in Torrance with a Redonda Beach Postal, right? So you know this. Torrance. Torrance Schools, Torrance City Services, 
Torrance on the beach. Torrance owns part of the beach. Did you know that? You'd be surprised, but a lot of real estate agents don't even know that. Or they don't even know anything about the hillside overlay ordinance and the 14 feet. Remember, work with a local, smart, experienced agent who knows stuff so they can keep you out of trouble later. Can you imagine thinking you're going to Redondo Beach High and you're going to West High? That's a big difference. Fast forward two years and guess what? It's back, baby. Relisted at a job dropping 26 0.995 million dollars and you might be asking why the price hike well why not it's got everything two parcels two houses giant pool and i don't know more amenities you can shake a pool noodle at noodles. here's where the tale takes a twist you know selling luxury real estate in the south bay on a tight schedule is like trying to teach a cat to juggle it's risky and most likely won't end well let's check out the roller coaster of desperation shall we from 26.995 million in December 2020 to in March of 2021, they dropped it to 22,995,000. That's just a little bit over what they paid for it back in February of 2018. But then in another brilliant move, if something's not selling, yeah, raise the price, because that always works. They went up $2 million the next year in May of 2022. Now remember, 21 and 22, things were selling like crazy, multiple offers, except for this one, and they decided to raise the price because it was too low and that's why people weren't buying it, because that always works. But then, now look, now they're kind of getting their stuff together. In November of 22, hmm, that didn't work, now we're dropping it out of 20 million to below acquisition price at 19,995,000. That didn't work. In March of 2023, they dropped it to $18,900,000. And then, in September of 2023, the grand finale is, drum roll please, it sold for 17 million, $500,000. Ouch. And remember, that doesn't even count real estate agent commissions and selling costs or holding costs and property taxes, which are astronomical. So it's really more than that if you figure all that in. Ouch is an understatement. Remember again, this was during 2021 and 22, runaway seller's markets where prices were going up 20% a year or more for those two years in a row. So what's the takeaway? Well, if you're selling a luxury property, especially a one of a kind in the higher price points of everything that sells in the South Bay, then just remember that real estate can build you a mansion of wealth, but if you're not careful, it can also bulldoze it into a heap of financial rubble. Because the secret of making money in holding real estate in the South Bay is T-I-M-E, time, time in the market, will make you money historically, and I don't see anything in the future that's going to change that. But for this property, since it's a one of a kind, it will take a long time. Looking back, they probably overpaid for it. This guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about. It's kind of sarcastic though. <laughs> Remember, do your homework and buy at sound prices, and just be prepared to hold on to your dream home for the long haul. Otherwise, real estate might sneak up on you and give you a financial wedgie. Wedgie, wedgie, wedgie. And may your real estate investments be as solid as the gel that holds my hair.